Wouldn't you say that's anti-Semitic? I feel like... I want to start by asking you, uh, actually, I don't want to ask, I want to tell you. Tell me. I want to read to you something from a very credible news pl platform. What's the very credible? It's very, it's not by, it's the, it's the Times of Israel. Uh -huh. So it's a very, it's, it's, um, I, wish, I think it's one the Pulitzer. Now, here's the quote. When asked... What would happen to Israelis if Palestinians took all the land, quote, from the river to the sea during Duke University's anti-Israel week? Anti-Israel? Keynote speaker, speaker Mohammed El Kurdo, is that you? Yeah. Right. Replied, I don't care. I truly, sincerely don't give up. I think that was meaning the, the audience, audience, and I assume it's an anti-Semitic audience, ro roared its approval. Mm -hmm. Chilling. That's chilling. To you. Why did you say that? Why should I care about what happens to the settlers? The people that ask these kinds of disingenuous questions never ever ask about what happens to the Palestinian refugees. What happens to the people who have been bombed to smithereens? What happens to our relatives who are in prisons, running away without charge or trial? Those things, those immediate things are never asked about. But what I'm asked to care about is the hypothetical future of the settlers who drink their coffee from my balcony. Hypothetical futures matter. Let me ask you this. Okay. If you are, if you are living in your house, right? And suddenly some guy from out of town comes and breaks into your house, blindfolds you, leaves you in the basement for decades and decades and decades. And then, you know, he'll say, okay, I'm going to relegate to the half bathroom and you can live there. I think it's a bit unfair to frame you as a non-peaceful person because you want all of your house. You don't, you think? It's, it's, I heard you say half bath. I got stuck when you said half bath, half bathroom. Right. Now, does that mean the half with the shower or the half with the toilet? Just the sink. Just the sink. Yeah. Essentially, this is a Palestinian condition, right? There is abundance all around us, and we only get a sink, barely, a sink that you control. Mm. Well, I don't have any follow-up questions to that one. But I, I didn't but, think you would. But, I, but, I, but I, I'm glad we arrived at a common understanding. Did, um, did, did, okay. Okay, Mohammed, let, let me, let, yeah. this, is a real, this is a real question. Yeah. The Holocaust. The Holocaust, yeah. Yes. Don't. Jews af deserve, yep. don't Jews deserve a, a place to be safe, a, a state? Definitely. But what is the elephant in the room here? I didn't say the octopus in the room. I said the elephant. So you can't accuse me of it. If Jewish safety... Yes. Is only made possible through the subjugation of another people, then it is not that great of a goal. I don't have a problem with Jews, Buddhists, or bisexual people building countries of their own. I just have a problem with them subjugating people as they do it. Jews want to have one state, one one country why can't we have one country right your country just happens to need to be established in my backyard yeah 
you have a lovely backyard. Yeah. Now we hear a lot these days, Zionism, bad. Racism is bad. Also. Bad. You agree? No, I agree. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't catch me in that ice. I know racism is bad, but, but there's a lot of people, a lot of people, not just Jews, feel that Zionism is a, is a movement just to keep Jews safe. So how could those two things be true at the same time? That's a dishonest approach to what Zionism is. And I know you don't care about me, my experience, my lived experience as a colonized subject. I can cite how you say it from the horse's mouth. All the Zionist pioneers, Herzl, Jabotinsky, Ben Gurion, take a look around the country, all of the populated villages, all of the colonization that's taking place. Come on, I, I don't have the patience for, this is not about semantics or about somebody's definition of, of what Zionism can be because Zionism only means what it does on the ground. And what it does on the ground is genocide, is colonialism. Here's what upsets me. Here's what upsets me. Fuck. Excuse me. I, um, I don't like this term settler. I don't like that. Uh -huh. I don't like our fields. So can we choose a different word? Colonizer? Colonizer? Now how, now let me ask you. The Killer. Thing. Arsonist. Well, this is just a brainstorm. We don't, I don't think we can decide right now, but. Squatters. Well, armed robbers. Looters. Colonizers. We hear now, colonizer, settler. What? How could this, ha that's, Jews are, have lived, they're indigenous to that land. All Jews are indigenous. All Jews are All indigenous. Jews, right. So a Jew from it's the, in the Bible. Bible. And, and you, the Bible is what your your historical reference document. It's one among, one among many. A Jew from China is indigenous to Palestine, and a Jew from Poland is indigenous to Palestine, and a Jew from the North Pole is indigenous to Palestine. And then they could come and get citizenship and live in Palestine as settlers. Meanwhile, my relatives in Jordan cannot even dream of going to Palestine because they are not Jews. It's bizarre, bizarre and absurd like to say that all Jews are indigenous when the Zionist pioneers have defined themselves and declared their movement as a colonial movement. They knew that they were settlers in Palestine. But that's besides the point. I, you know, I agree with you. I don't like the word settler. I think it's too soft of a word. So let's stop using it. Yeah, I think colonizer is really the word. Yeah. Now that doesn't seem softer. No, that I I think you're missing. I think settler is too soft. It's more. too soft. And it was something harsher, crueler. All Jews are cruel. All Jews are cruel. No, not all. Well, it certainly sounds like what you said. I don't remember exactly what you said, but that's what it sounded like. So no, let's, let's, let's. You can add it to my ADL page. It's... Doesn't Israel have the right to defend itself? No. If you're an occupier, you cannot defend yourself against the people that you are occupying. I'm sorry, that's a hard to swallow pill. That is a very hard to swallow. Pill. Yeah. And we don't hear this narrative about any other country, by the way. No other country has the right to defend itself, the right to exist. It's almost like Israel is a person. You don't like her? I don't like her. Her. Her, you said. Israel is a person. I was being sarcastic. Huh. Yeah, you think Israel is a person? It feels when you're being mean about Israel, and I think you are being mean. Because she's a damsel in distress. It feels like you're being mean to a person. To a woman. To a woman. Because Arabs. I did say that. It, you, you implied it with your blue eyes. Um. Now, saying Israel doesn't have a right to exist is, is a call for genocide, right? What kind of silly 
playground talk is that? To, you, to be in, in the middle of an argument with somebody, talking about the real life material violence that is being enacted against them, dispossession, displacement, imprisonment, siege, occupation, exile, so on. I don't like those so words. Forth. I don't like those words. I don't care. Israel having a right to exist as though it's a, a person with rights when there are millions of us Palestinians, human beings, who, not, who do not have human rights. So no, Israel has no right to exist. Sorry if that makes you feel attacked or singled out or persecuted even. But those, at the end of the day, are feelings. And feelings are not facts. But I take that to my grave. Well, to my therapist. Feelings aren't facts from a hominal curve. What about the ones that feel like facts? What about feelings that feel like facts? Why, why won't you accept a two-state solution? I do. Did you prepare for a state? Yes. Do you see these? Do you know anything about the history of two-state solutions, about the myriad of, myriad of times our politicians, Fatah, I'm going to say a scary word, and Hamas have agreed to two-state solutions? What's going to happen next is that you're going to, you're going to ask me, why don't we ever want peace? That is exactly, how did you know that? Because that is, that is you know, you're good. How, why don't you want peace? Because Israel, as, is, as we know, Israel wants peace. Israel wants peace. Famously wants famously. peace. As so why don't Palestinians? People, as it slaughters people and wants peace. Of well, course. Yeah. define peace for me, though. We all get along. We all, everyone, no one's mad. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we all, we, we, do we get our land back? Do refugees get to come back from their refugee camps and go back to their homes? Do teenagers get to walk around Jerusalem without the fear of being shot? Do I get the settlers in my house? Sorry. To use a triggering word, do I get the settlers in my house to leave it so I can go back to my house? Is that because that is the peace I want? I do want peace. We all want peace. We fight, we struggle, we resist because we love peace. And it's it's crazy to talk about peace when there's a boot on my neck. You're asking me about peace when I'm being violated, when I'm under the barrage of rockets. Again, this is happening as a genocide takes place. And you want to talk about peace. And you know what? I think Israelis are really good. Really, really good. No, no, don't end the sentence there. They are really good. I can end the sentence there. At playing the victim, at being politically correct, at saying that they want peace. How can you want peace and draw white phosphorus? Let me change, let's change course for a second. Yeah, let's. Now, why does Hamas want to kill all Jews. Uh -huh. Where did you read that? Some piece of paper. Um, again, if you did your research and you actually read Hamas's charter, you would see that Hamas goes above and beyond to distinguish between Jews and Zionists. Not to mention other things in Hamas's charter. A lot of things you would know if you opened that document. I have opened the list serve, it sounds like. No, Facebook. I've read multiple times Hamas wants to kill all the Jews. How right. could that not be true if that's what I've heard? Well, let's, let's focus on another element of your um, very brilliant question here. Once, once, right? Once. 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 It's something in the future, right? So as Israel is actively killing scores and scores, tens of thousands of Palestinians, we should fixate on what Hamas wants to do, right? Human shields. What, what's that? This is an Israeli narrative claim that says that Hamas fighters, Palestinian resistance fighters, hide behind civilians. Yes, right? that is true. And I could spend my day here, you know, waste more of my time trying to explain to you how that is false how they do not do this. But what, none, of this, none of this matters really, right? Because I don't believe in that logic. Let's say there are, let, let, let's say there are in fact human shields. That still does not justify killing people. Let's say 
that I'm a terrorist and I took you hostage and I hid behind you. Yeah. Right. No one can say that they should be able to shoot you and kill you in order to get to me. Mm. It's the same. It's the same way. You know, like we get this conversation a lot about the tunnels. We try to debunk the claim that there are tunnels when in fact the only argument should be that even if there are tunnels and even if there were being used as military bases, no one has the right to bomb a hospital where tens of thousands of people shelter. That sounds a lot like... Don't we say it? Anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism. Anti yes. Uh -huh. You cannot mention Palestine without being criminalized, without losing a job, without being terminated, without being maligned, smeared. You have tens of thousands of people mm -hmm. who are under the rubble at the hands of an army that professes itself to be Jewish. The Jewish army of the only Jewish state in the world that marches under the Jewish flag or the so-called Jewish flag. And you want to ask me about anti-Semitism and it's offensive. Am I wrong? There's a lot of bad press about Israel right now, and, and some of it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But how could it, Israel? First of all, let's say facts. Only democracy in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to it, the sentence. Right. And that's why they're shutting down press offices. They're bombing media towers. That's why even for Palestinians to hold Israeli citizenship, there is a myriad of laws that not only discriminates against them, but humiliates their basic rights and dignity as human beings. Well, we, we clearly we have different definitions of democracy. Uh huh. So that we is, can agree to that disagree. is clear. We can agree to disagree. That is clear. I think you're describing Jewish supremacy. Now, I don't like that phrase. Uh -huh. It doesn't, I, what does it mean? What does it mean? There's all these words thrown around. Supremacy, colonialism. Apart, these are big words. How can Israel be an apartheid state if there are Palestinians in the Israeli parliament? Mm -hmm. Right. And how can... American police disproportionately target black people when there are black police officers in that. Is that what it is? Do you not know that there is, you know what, I'm not, I, I was about to give you like the stuff about the laws that this made against Palestinians. I was going to tell you about Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch. But we are so beyond this because Zionism is enacting a televised genocide today. I am so beyond persuasion. It's not just apartheid. Apartheid doesn't even scratch the surface of what's going on. It is brutal, bloodthirsty settler colonialism. Forgive my word choice there. Well, I have something I have to show you that you're not going to like. Show me. I have a photo here of, um, let's zoom in. Um, Can you explain this if you say that Palestinians are anti-Semitic? Uh, what, what is this photo supposed to prove? This is supposed to prove, I don't need to prove it, it's, it's there. It, it's, it needs no proof. It is proof mm -hmm. about the deep-seated anti-Semitism amongst Palestinians. Let us know if you're that those Zionists were not meeting with Hitler at the same time, under the same... To get information. Right. They were doing it for no more reasons. They have a storyline. But this meeting right here in this very nice frame, this photo right here proves without a shadow of doubt that Palestinians, all Palestinians, are anti-Semitic. Now, you just said all Palestinians are anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. Last question. There is no P in Arabic. Three? Is this your gotcha question? There's no gotcha here. There is no P in Arabic, right? Right. Therefore, and so it shall stand, and wouldn't it be true then that there is no Palestine? 
How about taking this straight too? Barry, can you can keep that up? Dialogue is over. Okay. This and wouldn't you say that's anti Semitic? I feel like. Oh, we got that on camera. I'm glad. <laughs> I grew up with a, I grew up that in my town really with good. a huge banner that says "We stand with Israel in her quest for peace." <laughs> that was like, like watched every day of growing up. I don't have a problem with Jews, Buddhists, or bisexual people. <laughs> <laughs>